Whether you're looking for answers to specific life questions or simply hoping to become the best version of you possible, welcome to the Mental Breakdown and Psych Reg podcast, where we offer insight, information, and strategies based upon research and years of practice as psychologists. So sit back, have a listen, and get connected with our hosts, Dr. Bernie Wilkinson and Dr. Richard Marshall. So it's August 9th as we sit here and record. We're, we're recording the podcast that's going to go out today a little bit later than usual, but we're, we're covering a topic that I think is, is hugely important. Right. Because today is, um, well, today is the start of school for some this students. This week, yeah. um, th- some schools are starting classes yeah. this week. Right. Some of the private schools, the charter schools, mm-hmm. um, the uh, regular public school, the our county school system officially begins on Monday. Right. The when is that? The twentieth. Thirteenth. Thirteenth. I'm a week ahead. Yeah. But time is strange. Still. Einstein was right. You know, time is time is a flexible concept, um, because we're we're returning from this trip to the Philippines. But um, yeah, some of the schools are going back this week. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, and there was a new. Um, there's a change in the wind, as they might say. Yes, and and this came up when uh, my my son goes to a, a charter goes school. To charter schools. And we received some. We've been receiving emails about how things are going to be different this this mm-hmm. year and everything. And one of the things that they mention is that as a result of the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School Public Safety Act, which was signed by the governor here in Florida earlier this year, March, March. Mm-hmm. Uh, of this year, there will now be an armed officer at every public high a public school in, in the in, state of Florida in the state of Florida right and and so we thought we would talk a little bit about that because I think that there's some important implications and important things that we should prepare our students for as we are getting ready for this massive change right the, it, it is uh, what's overwhelming about it are the numbers right okay um, when the tragedy at Parkland, the uh, right. hi, uh, high school right. um, happened last spring. Um, people demanded some sort of action. Right. People, uh, demanded or expected some sort of response, and mm-hmm. so elected officials um, in Tal- in our state, mm-hmm. elected officials in the state of Florida, um, spring into action mm-hmm. and um, cobble together um, some. Uh, process mm-hmm. that yeah. promises to uh, protect our children. Right. You know, there's uh, uh, we, we want to make sure that our children are safe at school right. because when these school shootings occur, everybody feels very, very vulnerable. Right. You know that there's there's almost nothing you can do mm-hmm. uh, once a once a mm-hmm. person walks into a school with, a, with one of these high powered uh, semi automatic. Um, weapons. Uh, there's very little that you can do in the first few minutes, right. and so there is going to be some carnage, and that vulnerability mm-hmm. that parents feel for their children, uh, teachers, parents, and the students themselves feel, um, causes the elected officials to react, right. and they react and they sit down in committees and they hammer out this um, process right. that promises to protect vulnerable right. children. Now, part of the act works to keep guns out of the hands of people that they that shouldn't have guns and, there, and that's yeah because when this was being debated mm-hmm. the issue was do we want to have gun control right. or do we want to protect the mm-hmm. children right okay and so the compromise that was worked out is there are some small gestures about right. gun control right. um, but at the same time, there are gestures of how do we protect the children. Right. Okay. So it's a there's a little bit of each. Right. In so the bill. so there's some legal things that are, are uh, related to guns, gun sales, and gun ownership mm-hmm. in in general. Uh, so for example, uh, now anyone wanting to purchase a gun must be at least mm-hmm. 21 years old. And, right. And there's some mm-hmm. um, enhanced uh, background check and some of that kind of stuff that they're because apparently the. This shooter, the Parkland shooter, was 18 right. and was able to purchase yeah. weapons without parental consent. Right. Okay, right. so one of the one of the changes was we're going to move the age to 21. Right. Okay, so that was one change. Right. Um, and, and the other was about mental illness. Right. That if you were if you were Baker acted, right. 
you have a history of mental illness, that would also prevent you from buying a gun. It prevents you from buying a gun in a store. Right. I don't know that it prevents you from buying a gun in other places. Right. Right. Or somebody else buying a gun for you. Right. Um, I remember in Canada, yeah, there's a the lot of Newtown uh -huh. shooting. Uh, the mother purchased the weapon for right. the boy, and that boy was younger. He was right. like 15 or 16. Yeah. And so somebody could buy a weapon for you. Right. Yeah, yeah and, and, and of course, recognizing that there's always going to be those types of limitations. Sure. It, it is good that we're moving in a direction that, that hopefully will make it, uh, make the process a little bit more mm -hmm. um, uh, thoughtful as it relates to who's right. purchasing the guns and how they're getting them. But right. uh, the other piece it, to... The, and it puts guns in the same category as alcohol. Right. Or, or tobacco is that is that we're saying yeah yeah your you know your older brother an older sibling or relative or friend mm -hmm. could go in and buy alcohol and give it to kids, mm -hmm. um, but at least it it raises uh, right. awareness right. you know to say no you know maybe they should be twenty one right okay right so the other big major portion uh, of this act though is the four hundred million dollars that were attributed to. Um, ensuring safe schools right and and a major part of that uh, or just under half about 162 million dollars is is to be used to have a, a safe school officer at every school um, at each school in the state and, and these are armed, all sworn law enforcement officers an armed guard an essentially. armed guard these would right. be these would be people carrying a lethal weapon mm -hmm. will be in every school yeah. in the state right. as of this week. As soon as, right. as right. if a school opens, right. there will be an armed guard in right. the building. Exactly. Okay. And, you know, in addition, we've talked before about the Guardian program. That's um, right. This, this act also includes that, which is where um, individuals in schools, school-based school, school -based professionals, um, teachers or coaches or administrators, mm -hmm who have some background in right. either the military or um, law enforcement of some sort right. um, can go through a process, a training process, and then they too will mm -hmm. be able to carry weapons on school grounds, um, though they're concealed, they're secret, so right. we don't know who they are, so that again, in the event of a, um, of a crisis, uh, in addition to the known armed mm -hmm. guard that's there, uh, mm -hmm. there will be potentially other individuals that are um, armed. And knowing that there is an armed guard, this is actually when we always refer to it as the Guardian Program, yeah. but the full name is Coach Aaron Feiss Guardian, Guardian Program, Guardian. and he was the coach who sacrificed his own life to help right. kids uh, at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. Um, it's, we refer to it as, simply as the Guardian Program. Right. Apparently, and I, I don't know this for sure, but it's our understanding that um, there wouldn't be enough trained officers mm -hmm. to uh, to you know um, put put a put an officer in every school right and so it was decided that they would at they would supplement um, current law enforcement officers with this uh, right. trained mm -hmm. um, members of the guard that's the way program. it seems that's what it looks so, like yeah. um, and that these are people who have had some experience either right. in the military or in police work mm -hmm. who uh, know firearms and they know about mm -hmm. safety and they know about um, those kind of procedures and that they would supplement mm -hmm. police officers, law enforcement right. officers in the school. So it may be that there's sort of a like a plain clothes, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. just a um, plain clothesman, but that every school will now have an armed uh, individual right. uh, so that in the event of an active shooter, um, somebody else in the school uh, might be able to respond. Right. Yeah, and so so there, there's that piece. Um, there's also the requirement for every um, school to go through active shooter right. uh, training. Um, and actually, um, I don't know if you got the email. Uh, I didn't ask you this before we started, but um, I'll be attending one of those next week. We'll um, see. You're a parent. Beca beca no, because right. um, at one of the colleges that we teach at, oh. um, Florida Southern, uh, they're requiring. I don't know if you saw that email. Uh, by the look on your face, you didn't see that email. Um, it's next Friday, um, but there's a couple of other days that you can choose too, but it'll be a half day um, training on active shooter response and everything. So I'll be going through that next week and I'll let you guys know what that's all about. Well, I'm glad to hear that they're doing that because last spring when all of this was happening, 
um, there were only a handful of schools right. in, in even the largest county, Hillsborough County, who had um, an act, um, a plan mm -hmm. in place mm -hmm. that they had right. practiced. Right. And so, um, and the teachers were appreciative mm -hmm. because many of them said to me, I happened to be working in one of the schools at the time, and the teacher said to me that they would have made all of the classic mistakes. Right. Had sure. they not had that training, yeah. so I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that training is being offered. Yeah. That, that's uh, that'll be helpful if, if people yeah. know what to do in the case of an emergency. Absolutely. So we'll we'll see what that's about now. I'll, I'll, I'll so, offer a report. So this law has several components. Yeah. One is to uh, there's a sort of a bow to gun control. Mm -hmm. I, I think it was uh, the age, mm -hmm. uh, trying to eliminate those with a mental possibility of mm -hmm. mental illness. And also bump stocks. Right, get rid of those. I, I think are illegal now. Yeah. And a bump stock, of course. And there's a, and also a three day waiting period for every right. um, firearm. Right. It used to be three day waiting period for certain firearms, but now it's every firearm. Right. So there's a there's a little bit of gun control mm -hmm. in, in this bill. There's a little bit of protection in this bill, mm -hmm. um, the guardian program and right. the officers, and there's also training right. for active shooters. So. There are those three components mm -hmm. in this bill. It's going to yeah. cost a lot of money, right? And some of the money is probably going to be siphoned off of educational programs to pay for this. You know, about we're, that. we're not going to increase taxes to pay for this. We're going to take money. We're going to rob Peter to pay Paul, yeah. essentially, which is what politicians typically do because uh, it's very unpopular to um, to raise people's taxes, even if it's for a good cause. So, Dr. Um, Marshall's political leanings are coming out. No, I mean, I mean, you, you know, you do these things, and you say, "Well, we're not going to increase taxes, so the only way to fund it is either to borrow money, mm -hmm. which no, they gotcha. don't want to do, okay, or you have to take money from someplace else, and mm -hmm. someplace else would be, you know, what, where do you take it from? You know, I'm with you. I'm so, with you. Well, I got you. Don't be nasty. I'm not being nasty. So don't get me started on politics. I know. That's what. That's the reason that I said it is because I know that you'll. I'll rein it in. You. No, I. I'll rein it in. <laughs> but there, there's a few things that we want to talk about as it relates to this because there there are some pretty significant implications to students. Right. And, and this right. is what I worry about. Um, there are a lot of students who are very anxious about the start of school right. uh, in general, but also maybe more specifically anxious about their safety at school. Right. Um, now, having an armed guard on campus will relieve the anxiety for some kids, um, maybe more so the, the parents, right. uh, but it will relieve some anxiety f for some. Right. I'm, I'm thinking that if a, if a child is anxious about, well, could this, you know, they see all the school shootings and, and little kids wonder, mm -hmm. you know, could it happen in my school? And now the parents at least can say to the child, no, honey, there will be somebody in school right. to protect you. Okay. Right. So, so in that regard... Uh, some children will be relieved right. when they hear that there is somebody there to protect them. Absolutely. Right. So that, that'll be good. Right. The concern, though, is that there is another large group of students who, for whom the presence of the armed officer is going to be a, an ever, um, an ever-present reminder that you're reminder. not safe. That's right. It's a reminder that you're not safe. That we right. are all at risk all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and we have to have this officer here because it could happen at any time. Right. And so we have to be mindful of, of for those students so that we can encourage them and we can, you know, we can help them through some of this anxiety mm -hmm. because, you know, it, it's going to be their day one. Right. And it's going to be their, you know, day 100. It's mm -hmm. going to be there throughout the school year. Right. And we have to make sure that these students feel comfortable, feel safe, feel secure, um, you know, Again, and we talked about this right after the the Parkland shooting, shooting, uh, and that is, our students are safe, you know, by and large, our students are safe, and and I, I know that it's it, it's it's a little bit anxiety provoking to even say that uh, because I don't want to minimize anything, and it you know, the, the statements of you know it could happen at any time, it could happen anywhere. Of course, that is true. However, the, the probability, the, the likelihood of anything like that happening is, is, is small. And we have to keep in mind that we are preparing for the what if, but in, in doing so, we are constantly reminding people that there is a what if, and then that's going to in, increase anxiety and stress by a lot of, uh, for a lot of our students. Right, right. You know, one of the other components of the law that we didn't talk about was the hardening of the environment. Right. You know, that this whole idea of 
we're going to, because there's also going to be a fence around every school. Right. Remember that we talked about that in the earlier yeah. podcast. $99 million to, ex, to, to address specific school safety needs. Right. So bulletproof gas, glass, metal detector, <laughs> bulletproof gas would be cool. Right. That's good. That mm-hmm. would be interesting. Um, but steel doors, um, ungraded, upgraded locks, and right. all kinds of things on the structure of yeah. the school. Yeah, and they talk about hardening the target, you right. know, which is um, to make it more difficult for somebody just to walk into the building. Right. There was a time when um, I, when my children were young that I could just walk in the building and go into the right. classroom. Yeah. You know, you didn't even have to stop at the office. Mm-hmm. So you just say, hey, I'm going to my kid's room, yeah. and just walk into the school. Now you have to have your picture taken. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that they're going to is they're going to funnel people into certain entrances right. so that they can control the entrance and exits, yeah. and there'll probably be cameras around and everything. Yeah. Um, but this hardening will also increase stress. Right. It, it's going to be a change, yeah. and kids are going to. On the one hand, some kids will feel safer. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, some kids are going to be more anxious because again, it's a reminder of the danger. Right. You know that, that that's what it's going to do. Um, so you sacrifice a little bit of um, of um, Peace of mind, right? For safety, yeah. So, so that's an important uh, aspect of all of this that we have to keep in mind. That we have to hold on to um, as parents and as mental health professionals who work with with kids. Mm-hmm. We have to keep all of this in mind because we are going to have that anxiety. They're going to have that stress, right. um, just simply from the presence of you know these reminders. Yes. So, anxiety is one issue. Right. Okay. One of the things that I'm concerned about, different people have raised this issue, when you bring law enforcement into a school building, um, one of the great lines I saw in somebody's work was, are we outsourcing school discipline? Mm -hmm. School discipline used to be the exclusive province of educators, Mm -hmm. teachers and administrators. We then moved school resource officers Mm -hmm. into schools. Okay, now we're moving law enforcement officers Mm -hmm. into schools. When you have the presence of law enforcement officers in a building, there is a tendency to call them into Mm -hmm. disciplinary situations. If you assault a teacher, let's say a student is is being restrained, Mm -hmm. okay? If If that student assaults a teacher, a teacher has a choice of whether or not they're going to press charges. Right. Many teachers, some teachers do. They say, yes, I'm going to press charges. Other teachers said, no, I don't want to get this student into trouble. I don't want this kid right. to have a, a felony or you know misdemeanor charges. Right. If you assault a police officer, there's, right. there's that decision is taken away. You, you now have mm-hmm. um, a, a battery charges, and it's a felony, right. right? And so what used to be a school discipline issue now becomes a legal issue. Right. And that could lead to a lot of kids getting into serious legal trouble mm-hmm. for what used to be a school discipline issue. Right. And that's one of the things I worry about because if a student gets too unruly or even gets physically aggressive, mm-hmm. it's going to be tempting to call this armed guard. Right into that situation. Mm -hmm. And if the student does anything to the armed guard, pushes him, hits him, pushes him away, that's assault, Right. that's battery, and and that's gonna lead to some serious legal trouble. Right. So I hope that that's not uh, gonna happen. I think it's important to clarify what what you mean, because I think it's really important that you don't mean fighting the armed guard. Mm -mm. You mean, because um, battery on a law enforcement officer is just touching a law enforcement officer. All you have to do is raise your hand and brush their shirt, Mm -hmm. even accidentally. Right. You know, just you're defending yourself. And and depending on the nature of the circumstance, the officer could could put that as... And it's not, um, they're they're not going to court and pressing charges. Charges are there, period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, And and if, if, for those of you who think that that's a little bit of an exaggeration, I have worked with, with um, you know, uh, defendants <clears throat> who have a charge of battery on a law enforcement officer um, because in the midst of being upset about something, the officer's across the room and they go like this and hit a glass that mm-hmm. has um, milk in it right. and the milk falls and splashes onto the officer mm-hmm. and that was considered battery on a law enforcement officer. Yeah. You know, it was an accident. It was an accident, right. and, but that's, and you know, 
certainly in those particular cases, you know, there are a lot of other factors involved. Mm -hmm. But again, the point is that uh, it does not take a um, an intentional, no. um, mm -hmm. you know, fisticuffs for for it to be considered a battering a law enforcement officer. Um, and, and you know, we have to, of course, protect our law enforcement officers, and we have to respect them and all of that. But uh, I worry about s situations, especially not just with high school students, but also with elementary school students who really don't fully appreciate, and if they're emotionally dysregulated, mm -hmm. you know, they get upset and they're flailing around and they hit somebody on accident. Well, or, I think of kids getting into a fight in the cafeteria. Happens yeah. regularly, right? Yeah. Kid, boys and girls will get mm -hmm. into fights in, in cafeterias or in the hallways. And when people go in to separate them, right. they're still swinging, they're right. swinging and hitting and, and screaming and yelling. And it's very easy to accidentally um, hit uh, an officer or a teacher, yeah. you know. And then you're going to have criminal charges. So yeah. now you've gone from what used to be a fight in school, now you have some serious life-changing criminal charges against you. Right. And, and I worry a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. And you can say, well, then they shouldn't be fighting in school. Well, your kids do fight at school. And sometimes they have forever. some kids are just defending themselves. You know, they mm -hmm. they're finally get tired of a bully picking on them and they, they lash out. You know, should that kid have a criminal record? Yeah. So. yeah. So we're gonna we're, we're gonna monitor. We'll follow this. We're, we're yeah. gonna follow this because this is, you know, this certainly uh, affects all of our students. Um, doesn't matter what grade you're in. No. Uh, now. So now they're gonna be everywhere. Um, yeah. yeah. So so we'll we'll monitor. We'll keep you keep you up to date with right. what we learn. Mm -hmm. And certainly, if you hear of anything, if you have any experiences that mm -hmm. you'd like to share, you know, write into us. Let us know. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Yep. For or against. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So. so. All right. Well, then that is it for today. Well, what's the date today? Today is August 9th. August 9th, yeah, Thursday. This, this podcast is going out late, yeah. Going out today. It's going right. to go out as soon and, as I can um, get it edited. We might have some things coming up tomorrow and Saturday. Yeah, we're trying Interesting to, events happening uh, at the... Uh, at the UN. At the UN. Um, mm -hmm. It just so happens that one of the people that we met at our conference in the Philippines mm -hmm. works, for the U, works through the UN, uh, right. with the UN, and is involved um, in an advocacy uh, uh, right. level for uh, some individuals who have been abused right. by UN officers, officials. Right. Uh, officials. And so um, we're gonna try to get her on the phone. Uh, on, on Saturday, mm -hmm. we're gonna post our interview with Mandy. Right. Um, I, I always hesitate with her last name because I don't, I hate Is that it I can't Sangrin? Sangira. 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 That's right, it's another syllable in there. Yeah. Mandy Sangira. We're gonna, we'll, we'll post our interview <coughs> with her from the Philippines on mm -hmm. Saturday, but we're trying to get her, figure out if we can get her on the phone uh, to talk a little bit about this case. She's a passionate um, advocate she, for um, women and children. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, always talking about harmful practices, and, right. and she became involved in this big case that's just now right. hitting the media. Um, you know, yeah, within the last couple today, of days. Yesterday yeah. today. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're going to try yeah. to get her on the phone and talk a little bit about that. So. Right. Yeah, um, so yeah the stay tuned for me. that because that will be an interesting interview. This is yeah. a very interesting woman yeah. with 20-some uh, years of experience yeah. doing this kind of work. And um, yeah. uh, she was, uh, she was uh, closely um, involved right. in this particular situation that's being reported at the UN today. Yeah, so. and um, that may put tomorrow's podcast right. going out a little bit later than usual as well. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we're doing what we can as we're <laughs> recovering up. from... It's a little bit our, of a cap. I think we're doing well, though. I think you know, so. We I did okay. So. We did a couple of podcasts from an airport in Taiwan. That's right. And that was fine, all the, all the uh, orchids in the background. Um, yeah. So uh, we're trying to keep up. Uh, we yeah. may have missed one somewhere along the way. I don't think so. I think we're okay. Yeah. Wednesday. No, we got Wednesday's out. Did we Wednesday's get it was your uh, epiphany. Oh, that was my epiphany. Yeah, yeah I had an epiphany. So. Talk I mean, about have you tweeted anything since then? Um, I have not. I've looked at it. I've, I've No, no, wait a minute. I've opened it up. I've gone through. We got some last night. Okay, some, twi some tweets came in. But um, I don't want to because you warned me. You said that it makes your life more difficult. If I have a Twitter, it obligates you. It does. And I don't want to obligate you. So I appreciate that. I'm going to have it. My daughters are going to give me a tutorial if they can contain their laughter. As they, if, uh, if they can, if, if they can contain their um, guffaws of laughter over their father tweeting, um, they're going to give me a tutorial. So yeah. hopefully, we'll spare you. Sounds good. Uh, the time. That'd be great. Okay. All right. Well, until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid. Thanks for sharing this episode of the Mental Breakdown and Psych Reg podcast. 
Be sure to check out the show notes for links to follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel, where you will find all of our previous podcasts and much more. We would be honored if you would become a patron through patreon.com, where any donation you can manage will go to the development and creation of more content. Just visit patreon.com slash the mental breakdown for more information. Thanks again for listening. Have an awesome day, and we look forward to being back in your feed tomorrow morning.